Salvage is probably the most publicly delayed feature in Star Citizen's development, but it's also a bit misunderstood. See, Salvage isn't a single feature, it's several different features making up a profession, much like the various tools that make up the mining game mechanic. From components to fuel to the actual hull of a ship, you'll have to figure out how to dismantle derelict ships in this career path. Now, one more time, we're expecting Salvage to begin its implementation into the game this year, but this time it's different. We have actual proof. However, as I said before, we're only getting one segment of Salvage. So let me explain what it is we're actually getting this year, and what else Salvage gameplay has in store for us in the future. Thank you for coming to my Tomato Talk. So, Salvage has been on the roadmap so many times I've lost track, and this is all over the course of about five years in various iterations. It has, in my opinion, done its best at displaying how crazy the whole process of making this game has been. Whether due to shifting priorities or surprise blockers, this feature has been kicked over and over. But we've only been told a couple of times what it fully entails. Everything I'm about to tell you is based on a fairly small amount of info over the course of a few years, and it's all subject to change. But this is the plan for salvage. Ship munching is the cutting off of chunks from derelict ships and grinding them up into processed metals in the interior. The main component to keep in mind here is the explicit ability to cut off chunks of ships and the ability to utilize grinders to break it down and package for trade. This is all still very conceptual though, despite the Reclaimer already being in game and the Vulture being right around the corner, but we'll talk about how those two ships will work for now in a minute. Another form of salvage will be component retrieval. As many players are aware, while ships are important in this game, their real capabilities won't be realized until they can upgrade components. Most players also know we're still pretty far away from these customizations mattering all that much. That being said, the components themselves are already quite valuable, and will only continue to increase in value. So when you come across a massive javelin wreck, you might not be salivating over the huge 10 million credit scrap job, but rather the relatively simple 20 million credit component extraction. A useful application for the newly white box complete Argo SRV, possibly due to release next year. This is also pretty far away though, as these components and the interactions regarding them rely on a few key technologies that are still a ways out. The pipe system, and thus resource management, will need to be working properly for these components to be properly physicalized in each spaceship, which still has the rest of the year and likely more time to finish its work. In addition to that, there are still plenty of ships that need the proper areas for components marked out. Two years ago, the team had just begun the process of making components show up as items in-game. Now they are transferable to our inventories. The process on this endeavor is being made, but it's slow and we have no real idea when it might reach our hands. Then there's the lesser known version of salvage, siphoning. As a sim style game in space, Star Citizen will continue to put increased emphasis on the importance of water and oxygen, especially with life support features currently being developed. This means being able to remove oxygen, water and fuel from derelicts and even possibly defunct space stations could be a very lucrative business or at the least, a practical way of staying alive. We know very little about this other than that it will depend on the pipe system to connect all these fluids together, the room system to hold things like oxygen for you to access, and the life support system to maintain all that we've already talked about. So this will also be very far in the future. So that leaves us with the most basic form of salvage, and what we expect to experience this year, hull stripping. Looking at the first technical showcases of hull stripping, it's easy to understand what this will be. It is the act of melting and removing the outer shell of spaceships, which you can then use to patch up other ships to repair them. It has been described by some in the community as mining spaceships, however we still have not had a proper showcase of the feature at the time of this writing. It does seem to consist of the simple process of pulling material from a ship, which could get a bit boring on its own, but it also reveals to us a long sought after technology being implemented the new damage map system. 
Hopefully this means some progress can be made on the evasive armor system as well, which will add a lot of depth to the ship combat again. While this whole stripping might not seem like a major advancement in the salvage profession to some, it's another good sign of progress in a direction that matters for players now. That being said, I'll wait until we actually see the mechanic to judge. Overall, this method of hole stripping may not sound all that exciting, but you may find what we're going to be salvaging a bit more interesting. So as far as what we know we'll be able to salvage, things are actually a little bit murky. Everything I'm about to say is what I've gathered from recent talks, but it's all subject to change over time as new complications are discovered. When it comes to salvaging wrecks, one possibility might be contracts that we can receive to go get specific wrecks from sites that are spawned using the quantum economy and universe simulation system. This would take into account a multitude of variables such as local conflict levels and the probability of pirates attacking cargo haulers, among other things. Once it's determined a place makes sense for a derelict ship, that ship will be spawned there in some way. Where things become tricky though, is whether these derelicts will be the same as the derelicts spawned for random NPC settlements that are being brought to the game next month, or other very unique missions in the future. We have no idea when it comes to specific missions, because what if the final level of some mission gets salvaged up by some Belta Loda? But we'll see if this ends up being the case as this new feature is explored. If this does indeed remain true though, and we have complete freedom to salvage all derelicts no matter their use, things will be complicated, but very interesting. Then there will be salvaging your enemies. When a battle does occur that's actually physicalized, it is expected that we'll be able to come to the battlefield afterward and pick through the skeletons of those who lost. A recent Star Citizen Live seemed to confirm this, and persistent entity streaming which is a big prerequisite and something we discussed earlier this month looking at the upcoming 4.0 update should allow a feature like this to work alongside wrecks that don't disappear. I'd be remiss if I didn't also mention that players will likely find ways to uh, salvage other players ships while they're still on board. So watch out. So we're currently looking at the most basic version of salvage, hull stripping. It needed persistent entity streaming, the damage map system, and the salvage gadgets themselves to work. It will allow us to expand our gameplay options when we come across derelict locations and begin the second new career path added to the game in four years. We're looking at a 3.18 live release of the feature which should be sometime around September or October of 2022. But the testing branch of the game, the PTU, will surely have access for some time before. After this, I expect our next addition to be physically removable components, and then hopefully ship cutting and munching, as we've seen added to the progress tracker last week. But we're going to have to see how that's approached. So until that happens, you can subscribe to my channel here for more regular content, and check out my second channel for additional more casual content like my podcast and gameplay. I hope you learned something in this video, and I'll catch you in the next.